I absolutely loved what Mareko had done with the Bighorn Chef and uh, obviously wanted him to continue on helping us build out our culinary line. And so what he came up with next, and so what he came up with next is pretty amazing. The Santoku. Okay, so the beauty of a Santoku is that it is a smaller knife. This is a great general purpose, purpose like every day. You don't need something long like the chef's knife for like slicing something large like a, a brisket or a roast or anything like that. This is just like you're preparing lunch and you're blasting out some apples, you're cutting up some vegetables, you're making a sandwich or something like this. Also, because it's shorter, it's less intimidating, a lot more welcoming for people to use. Again, the geometry, especially the edge profile is really key. The, the cut, the spine in the blade actually kind of sweeps up. And again, it's all about creating the, the functionality of this knife and making it a real user. Um, so that you have all the hand and knuckle clearance that you need off your work surface. Um, again, it has a fine tip that you're able to uh, very easily access on your work surface for any kind of fiddly work, small work, uh, if you're trying to core an apple or do any, whatever kind of small fiddly work you're trying to do. Um, but yeah, the Santoku is typically in Japanese culture is a vegetable knife. It's very handy for slicing, dicing, chopping, mincing, uh, carrots, peppers, onions, cabbage, all kinds of vegetables and fruits. In my kitchen, a knife this size is definitely gonna be the go-to for me because it's just so handy and light and inviting and friendly to use. What I really, what I really like about the Santoku is the fact that it is a little bit less intimidating. I have four young kids, and as we're teaching kids to work with knives in the kitchen, you know, you just don't want to hand your kid a giant chef's knife. It's a lot to control uh, that big blade with a lot of tip. It's also the way that Mareko dropped this tip in here. It is very useful to be able to sit in there and just do little fine chopping things with the tip. And you know, really, a lot of this too is just an aesthetics and, and a personal, um, you know, preference thing about you know. The, it, and I really think it's cool how a Japanese culture, other cultures come up with unique knives based on the things that they cook and they eat. And there's a lot of different people in this country that cook and eat a lot of different types of food. And you know, that large chef's knife that we came out with, that Bighorn, does a lot of really cool things. And I really look at that as like kind of an American style chef's knife. Uh, but this is just a really cool take on uh, on a different a different look from a different country. And the fact that that chef's knife that we came out with is just under eight inches, and this one's just under seven, that extra inch makes a big difference in being able to control that knife, especially with those younger cooks in your house. So often uh, when I am reached out to for a custom knife build, people think they want the biggest chef's knife because they're trying to get the biggest bang for their buck. But realistically, every, th every time I ask them, or uh, having these conversations with them, I ask them, what is the knife that you actually go to the most? Because that is actually what's most important, especially when it comes to a custom handmade knife. You're gonna be paying for that thing that takes several weeks to be made. Um, and the reality is that most people are going for a knife that is about this size. It's not a large chef's knife. Uh, it's not a small paring knife. It's a little bit in between. It can get all that work done without being overly intimidating. And it's just, honestly, it's just a great knife to reach for and use in the kitchen.